Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you for being here. Today we are going to discuss in detail how Databricks leverages Lakehouse and Fivetran for marketing analytics. My name is Miles McDonald. I'm a Technology Alliances Manager for Fivetran and grateful to manage our Databricks partnership today. With me, I have Chris Klazinski, the Marketing Analytics Manager for Databricks and a formidable Fivetran Power user. We will get to know Chris in just a bit. Prior to getting started, should you have any questions for us, please utilize the chat. We have an entire team that can help answer your questions as we go along, and thanks so much in advance for your engagement. Before we get started, a quick note on the agenda. First, we have introductions. As mentioned, you have myself and Chris, but you also hear from Craig Wright, a Fivetran partner engineer, a little later. We will then do a quick Fivetran overview and architectural spotlight of where Fivetran fits in the data landscape. We'll dive right into the Q&A with Databricks to discuss their use case of Fivetran, and that's where we'll hear from Chris, and finish with Craig Wright's demonstration of Fivetran. First and foremost, a little bit about Fivetran. Fivetran was born under the Y Combinator as an incredibly fast-growing startup with over 1,800 customers. We help customers across almost all industries and verticals, from SMB to enterprise, seamlessly ingest data from 170 pre-built, no-code and no-maintenance data pipelines. From marketing and sales, finance and HR, to complex databases, Fivetrain has you covered. We are fortunate to have a shared investor with Andreessen Horowitz with Databricks, who are able to see the tremendous technological value and synergies that we have together. So let's chat a little bit about the Fivetrain architecture. Fivetran sits in the ingest portion of the traditional data stack architecture. Our core job is to remove the burden from traditional ETL processes and provide customers a simplified way to ingest analytic ready data from applications, databases, events, and more into Delta Lake. So data engineers, data analysts, and data scientists can spend engineering time and focus on impacting core, and bus core business initiatives on important analytics, BI, AI, or ML projects. Fivetran was a part of the initial ingest partner launch back in February with Databricks last year and have been helping customers accelerate analytical workloads ever since. Whether customers are just getting started in their analytical journey or are knee deep in complex analytical projects, Fivetran finds a home in all of these scenarios, helping simplify the outset of and acceleration of these initiatives. I did wanna highlight that Fivetran is no stranger to the original ETL process. The dichotomy between building and maintaining versus automation via Fivetran has been and is traditionally viewed as a, comp as a competitor or competing, when in reality, how the way we see it is that it's actually a joint success story. It's not a versus, it's a with. As engineering teams begin or continue to run lean, efficiency is vital and critical to success. Our customers, like Databricks, chose Fivetran and to use Fivetran to offload a portion of their ETL to focus on more impactful efforts of their business. More on that later. Moral of the story, I hope you don't see this as a competitor or doing one thing versus the other or one thing is better than the other, but rather seeing this as an opportunity to explore an alternative or an addition to that can help your business grow at scale. Now I'm super, super excited uh, to do a quick Q&A uh, with a Fivetran Power user at Databricks. With me, I have Chris Klazinski, as mentioned, who's the Marketing Analytics Manager at Databricks. Chris, I'd love for you to start by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Miles. Uh, so my name is Chris Kay, and I joined Databricks in 2019 as the first Marketing Analytics employee. Uh, before that, I was working at Amazon on the Kindle and Alexa customer behavior teams. Awesome. Well, great to get to know you a little bit more, Chris. Uh, I'd love to understand and have the audience understand a quick tidbit on what Databricks does and, and what your role is there. Great. Uh, so we provide a unified analytics platform that helps customers solve the world's toughest problems. And what I do is I help marketing solve their toughest problems, whether that's evaluating how a campaign is performing, measuring the ROI of a certain channel, or understanding the impact of an event on a customer's usage. Awesome. That sounds like pretty important stuff. Well, I guess in that vein, what, what does success look like for, uh, for your team and, and how do you typically measure that today? Uh, so we support marketing's key objectives uh, and those would be, of course, generating new pipeline opportunities, driving awareness and growing our database, as well as increasing usage at customer accounts. Uh, and we do this by providing dashboards, forecasts, and various analyses. Awesome. That's great. 
So now we're going to really get into it. This is what I'm, I think I'm personally excited to learn. And I know that the audience is as well. How did you guys manage your data ingestion before Fivetran? What were you doing? What were some of the processes that you guys had in, in place? Uh, yeah, Miles, we did not have dedicated data, data engineering resources. So we had a mixture of Alteryx with some legacy pipelines managed by central teams. And okay. long and the short of it was it wasn't working for us well. <laughs> uh, you must know the next question because my next question to you is what challenges uh, about that process um, did your team face with that existing kind of data ingestion process? Uh, yeah, so as we transitioned to, uh, from a traditional data warehouse to Databricks, uh, we were facing a lot of problems with our Salesforce and Marketo pipelines. Um, a few of those were, we weren't able to get our data into the Delta format. We had to use Parquet. Another one was we weren't able to natively append data. We had to come up with some clever hacks to do that. Um, and any schema change would inevitably break our pipeline and we'd have to scramble and, and figure out how to prevent an outage. Boy, clever hacks. That's, uh, that's an interesting one for sure. I don't know if that, that is probably the opposite of efficient, I, I'm assuming, for your team. <laughs> yeah, um, not, not something we want to do on a daily basis. Absolutely. Well, now that we've talked about the challenges and obviously what you were doing before uh, and some of the problems that you were facing, I'd love to understand, you know, as your team started to be interested or looking into other uh, potential solutions, specifically for data pipeline providers, what were you really looking for? What was super important for you and the team? Yeah, so we're, we're not data engineers and we're not looking to be in the data engineering business. What we were looking for is something that was turnkey, didn't require any coding, and was of course reliable and easy to use. That makes sense to me. <laughs> uh, I guess it might be important for the, for the group um, to kind of walk through maybe the current architecture. Like what does that currently look like um, for, for your team? Yeah, so we use Fivetran for our uh, core source system data uh, from three different systems, Salesforce, Marketo, and Google Analytics. And all of the data from the systems, from these systems is coming in uh, through Fivetran. Uh, but we also utilize a lot of other uh, product data and data coming through other pipelines from different teams. And once we have all of our data in the data lake, we are able to do different transformations and um, get that data into a meaningful form that we can then run analysis on or provide dashboards. Excellent. Yeah, I love this. For me, I'm a very visual person, so it's certainly helpful to see a little bit about how the, the overall flow of the architecture works. Um, here's an off-the-cuff question for you. Was this like implementing Fivetran? Was this like a, a year long process? Was this super, you know, crazy for, for the Databricks team to get stood up or, or tell me a little, bit, a little bit about that quickly? No, Miles, it, it was very simple. Uh, so we followed the quick instructions, uh, set up a cluster, whitelisted the IPs, and we were pretty much off to the races within a few days. I love that. That's great. Uh, and I figured that'd be a quick answer. <laughs> Biased, of course, because I knew it was going to be quick. Uh, that said, I think what everyone wants to know, including myself, is by implementing Fivetran, what has your team been able to accomplish? What are some of the, the successes and success stories you can share? Yeah, so once we set up these pipelines, we were able to automate a whole uh, series of different Tableau reports, and those answer marketing's most common questions. And that allows us to divert our efforts into uh, some more interesting projects. So what we've been able to do is provide accurate forecasting to campaign teams uh, to allow them to uh, understand how they're pacing and if their programs are performing well. Uh, and we've also been able to work with other teams at Databricks on a variety of data science and ML projects. That's awesome. That sounds really uh... Sounds like it's been really impactful for your team. Um, obviously, we talked about the challenges of spending a lot of time on kind of those clever hacks uh, in regards to the pipelines, and it sounds like it removed that uh, and those uh, efforts, uh, which is really great. Um, I think it might be helpful uh, as kind of one of our last questions here to discuss, you know, I know Databricks probably wasn't the only uh, company in the world struggling with some of these same challenges. So, you know, what advice would you give customers or prospects that are facing similar challenges to what we discussed today? 
Yeah, good question, Miles. If you're struggling with certain pipelines or you're simply just not wanting to invest data engineering resources in them, give Fivetran a try. It certainly worked fantastic for us and it's very easy to use and simply put, it just works. Chris, thanks so much for sitting down with us today virtually to discuss Databricks' use case of Fivetran. I know I've learned a lot and I really appreciate the time uh, going into as much detail as you did about Databricks' use case. Now, if we can make a smooth transition, I'd love to introduce Craig Wright, who's a Senior Manager at Developer Relations and Partner Engineering for Fivetran. He'll be showing us a Fivetran demonstration to really help wrap us up here and at the Data and AI Summit that Fivetran has sponsored uh, and really be able to showcase what Fivetran is all about. Craig, thanks so much for being here. Take it away. So I have a few tabs open here that I'd like to share with you. The first is a Fivetran account that has already been connected to a Databricks warehouse um, or a Databricks uh, setup on Amazon. Um, so we're already connected to Delta Lake here and uh, we're ready to go just to set up a connector. My apologies for the old logo. We are actively correcting that as I speak. I also have open my window to that Databricks cluster. So I'm gonna be able to show you um, that the data didn't exist that it will exist after we're done and that we can query it. And finally, I'm going to be connecting the GitHub connector. And so just for uh, just to make sure that I have all my um, information available to me, I've opened up the GitHub documentation on the fivetran.com slash doc site, uh, just in case I had any questions while I was going through this. OK, so I'm going to set up a GitHub connector, um, which is a fairly uh, fast and easy connector to set up here. It's great for demoing. I'm going to go ahead and click connector up here. And this is essentially the giant list of all of the connectors we support. Um, rather than try to find GitHub in that list, I'm going to go ahead and just use the type down and find it. So all I need to do here is give the schema a name, a name that will be permanent, authenticate with GitHub, and the data will uh, be ready to start flowing. There's a few configuration options that you'll see in a minute, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and get this going. Before I actually uh, start this, though, I want to go over to the Databricks site and demonstrate that uh, I haven't loaded a GitHub table yet. So uh, this is our um, this is our testing cluster. So there's a lot of different schemas already created here, um, and there is a GitHub schema that was created by testing. But if I search for that GitHub Databricks demo, it does not exist yet. OK, let's go through the OAuth flow. I've already actually authenticated with GitHub, <laughs> so I didn't even need to do that. Um, and normally, you, you would see there is, a, is the GitHub authorization screen. And rather than sync all repositories, because I have an absurd number of repositories attached to my account, I am just going to go ahead and sync this one repository in the instance of, in the interest of time. So we do a few connection tests for every connector. Um, in the GitHub case, uh, we just verify that the credentials are good for connecting to the API and making sure we actually still have access to those repositories. And that is it. I want to emphasize this fact. Um, at this point, I can just go ahead and click Start Initial Sync. And in fact, in the interest of time, I am going to do that. And the data will start syncing. That is all the setup that I needed to do for this connector to get data flowing from GitHub. If I wanted to, there's a couple of other places where I can do some setup. In the Schema tab, I can choose whether or not to sync um, entire tables um, with a more database-like connector, I can also choose whether or not I want to sync columns or if I want to hash a column so that the data in that column is obfuscated on the um, Delta Lake side. And in the Setup tab, I can control how frequently this connector syncs. It can connect, um, it can sync as infrequently as every 24 hours or as frequently as every five minutes. Fivetran does not need a running cluster to sync data, so we'll turn the cluster on, we'll start the sync, we'll turn it off. Um, it's possible that the customer, um, you know, even if you don't load a lot of data, that's still 
takes time and money to start the cluster up and shut it down. And so it's possible a customer may only have the need to sync every hour um, just to kind of spare those costs on turning the cluster on and off. Um, alternatively, they may have a ton of data that's coming in and absolutely needs to be there um, as fresh as possible. So five minutes works great for that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pause here while the connector syncs. Uh, we'll join this again later and take a look at how it landed in Databricks. Excellent. We can see that the first historical sync has finished. Historical syncs are the first time a connector is synced with Fivetran, and they usually take a little bit of time. In this case, uh, this historical sync took 15 minutes. That's to download all of the data for one GitHub repository. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go see if that data showed up in Databricks. So on a, in a very trivial way, I can just uh, open this up in the uh, data viewer and see, ah, oh, yes, indeed, I have the GitHub's uh, Databricks demo, and that's actually easier to see when I use your type down functionality. And the tables are here. Why don't I go ahead and open up a workspace and see if we can't query a little data out of that uh, out of that table. So here I have a SQL workbook um, and I'm going to use Fivetran's documentation here for a minute because I know that we have Fivetran publishes the schema um, ERDs for all of their schemas and here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and I think what I would like to do is, oh that's too zoomed in is take a look at uh, what commits have been made to this repository. I have a pretty good memory of, of who committed what to this repo, and so this seems like a good way to test uh, if the data got in there. So, okay, I can see I probably want to pull the, the commit SHA, the author email, the author date, um, and maybe the message. So going back to uh, Databricks workbook, um, I can go ahead and type that in. Select SHA for email, author date, and message from GitHub data bricks demo dot commit. Let's order by the author date descending. Excellent. Let's go ahead and give that a run. It's nothing like a live demo to get the excitement flowing. Oops, I made a small mistake. So let's go back and fix that. What did I do wrong? Oh, <laughs> so simple and yet so relevant, so important. Um, so I just left out the buy. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. All right, and look at this. This looks not unlike a git, uh, a git log command uh, where we're seeing essentially the history of all of the commits uh, to this repository, but we're now seeing it with data that has been inserted in the data lake. So this is a very simple example of how Fivetran works, but what I'm hoping to have shown is just how simple it is for data to move from a source and into Databricks Delta Lake. So the takeaway I wanted to leave this audience with is this simple statement. Fivetran delivers Databricks Delta Lake customers with both zero maintenance data pipelines and the ability to achieve completeness of data with the automated ingestion of data from modern systems, no matter the source's schema or the API changes. And we think this represents a sea change in giving pipeline and analytics engineers the ability to focus on what is really important to them, which is generating business value out of this data, not spending a ton of time figuring out how to get this data into Databricks Delta Lake to begin with. We found that has a ton of value for our customers, and we think you'll find that it has a lot of value for yours as well.